Hey, what I have here are a half dozen punk albums. And I'm not a punk guy. Are these punk albums? I don't know. Some people might say no. No idea. But, um, you know, I came of age, you know, when you're about 11, 12 years old. That's when you really start getting into music, I find. And that's when Offspring and Green Day were getting big. And I know those aren't real punk bands, but even still, you got to admit, there's probably a million 16-year-olds at the time that listened to Smash and uh, definitely dig deeper into that kind of music. But big fan of the Stooges and The Clash. I've talked about them already. I'm not talking about hardcore punk stuff or New York hardcore, evil hardcore. Talk about another stuff. Just some odds and ends. Punk albums I don't think I'm going to put anywhere else. So first one I got here is Rancid and Out Come the Wolves. Probably the most popular album I'd say. I think this was the second full length. And the songs, the, like the hits that I think of when I think of Rancid are all on here. Uh, Time Bomb, Ruby Soho. I got to be missing a couple. But uh, you know what? I never followed them past this, but... I thought this and the one before that, Let's Go, were both fun. And so from a distance, I've always kind of respected Rancid. But again, I don't know much about them. They're still around, aren't they? Pretty sure. Hey. Zeke. Kicked in the teeth. This came out in 1998 on Epitaph. Same as uh, Rancid, as a matter of fact. So I think Zeke were from Seattle. And this is very fast, heavy, short punk songs that have a little bit of a metal influence, I'd say. But my problem with Zeke is that I think the songs always just kind of are in and out before they really make an impression. I thought they'd have a lot more of a rock and re sorry, a rock and roll feel to the songs than the straightforward punk that I, I was getting. But I remember they actually signed a relapse a couple albums later, and uh, I never heard that one, but heard a lot of good things. Dirty Sanchez. This came out in 1999, the year after the last time we looked at. And again, I always wanted more of a, a Super Suckers kind of thing, a more rock and roll thing. I don't know why I always kind of expected that from them. But even still, heavy, fast, uncommercial punk. Good stuff. Fucked Up, Hidden World. This came out on J-Tree. And I don't see the year here, but I'd say this was like 2006 or something. And I bought this just based on a positive review I saw by a metal journalist. The Fucked Up are from Toronto. And I think they become more and more popular as the years go on. They put out a lot of stuff. I've always considered it progressive, punk, longer songs than what you're used to. A lot of different elements thrown in. But again, I am very out of the loop on this band. I just remember my favorite song on here was the third one, Invisible Leader. Bane, The Note. This came out on Equal Vision in 2005. And Bane are a band that I always heard, they're a punk band I always heard positive things about from people in the metal. But you know what? The sound did nothing for me. I've talked about the Misfits on a number of other videos, but I don't think I've ever shown my copy of American Psycho. So I'll do it here. And this could be... Again, not to repeat myself, but this and Famous Monsters are my two favorite Misfits albums. And it's hard to say which one's the best, but... In terms of songs here, I'm going to go with Walk Among Us, Dig Up Her Bones, 
The Haunting, and the last song, Don't Open Till Doomsday. This album is a 9.5 out of 10. Awesome. So there we go, just a half dozen kind of punk albums I have laying around. Maybe I'll make a couple more, but we'll see. Thank you.